<laughs> it's working. Did you want? Did you see? It's recording. Did you see or see? Oh, uh, master D. Uh, C, it's very interesting. C and up and A. Cool. C. D no. Okay. C is okay. C okay. Just uh, just do the normal. Line it up. I think I think no, the uh, master is awesome. yeah. okay. C is cool. okay. But D no, because I'm I get uh, D light camera man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. Pro not professional, <laughs> but I'm not professional either. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but you 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 take you know, picture li like <laughs> professional. <laughs> uh, those pictures came out really well. I love them. Uh, after for, uh, yeah, yeah, semester, yeah, yeah, we can, you, that's, that's we, some of we, yeah, yeah, with camera, uh, we can go to some place to capture the picture. We can, we can. Uh, if you guys want, after the after the quantum final, we can all uh, quantum final after uh, December twelve. Mm -hmm. okay. After December twelve, what's the plan? Because After your summer 12? Because you guys can come I over to my uh, place I, 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 okay. and we can do like Christmas, I don't know. I'm gonna have food <laughs> and stuff and you know, we can... Your place? Play games? games. But yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, uh, would you like to have uh, turkey? Turkey? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have one, uh, but I don't know how to make and... Oh yeah, no, I've I've never cooked the turkey. <laughs> yeah, if if you want, can I I can give you I have one okay, fresh sure, sure. fresh turkey. Sure, sure, sure. just just like keep it refrigerated because oh, yeah. I I have no place for it now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm keeping in my refrigerator. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. cool. <laughs> but I don't know to cook or to prepare. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to earn your bread. <laughs> Of reason why this is at all useful in actual math. 
whatever contour you draw, the math will work out. It's up to you how difficult you make the math. If you draw a really nice, simple, easy um, contour, the math will become easier. If I, you could technically do the math by going yeah. and finding the integral of that contour, and it will still be valid. Yeah. It's just miserable. Yeah. <laughs> Does it help? Uh, well, sort of. Um. <laughs> it counts for the bonus points. Yeah. <laughs> Negative bonus points. <laughs> <laughs> give a general overview of uh, Cartesian tensors because you may come across them almost in every field with an theory in classical mechanics or perhaps using and, you know. so at least you understand the general notation uh, you're not you know it's you know special theoretical relative in general relativity use you know, more not in a go beyond in Cartesian tensors. That's not we're not going to touch upon that at all. I mean, uh, so this is just to help you with some simple stuff that you will be familiar with. Uh, <clears throat> so basically it, it you know electromagnetic theory is very nice because Maxwell's equations can be written concisely in two so four equations, two equations, one single the tensor mutation. So you will see that often, quite often written in that form. Okay. So you have to Understand this is really the same method of equation, four set of equations are doing completely you know, different set of notations. So, so that is uh, you know something which you'll come across in six, physics six eleven when you take that uh, next semester, I guess, right? I mean, so yeah, so that's what uh, I'm going to do. Pretty elementary, uh, but just to you know wrap up everything, you know, all parts that may be touching different parts of uh, the disciplines. Uh, so as I said, I mean, so most of most of the time it's very useful, of course, uh, in uh, general relativity and special. Without it, you cannot really do the field at all. What we are going to do is condition tensors. That is. Uh, Coordinate systems are orthogonal coordinate systems, not curvilinear linear or non orthogonal coordinate system. In general, relativity, the complication comes because it's not orthogonal coordinate system that you are using. Um, 
So the other piece, as I mentioned, is uh, electrodynamics. Basically, Maxwell's equations, but in a very elegant fashion. And I, you know, I think uh, the other places that you can will come across in elastic theory, uh, you know, to express stress and strains to tensor, the elastic constants are all tensors. This is a fourth order uh, tensor. So, so there also you'll see. I mean, uh, stress strain tensor. Why was this field of tensors even introduced? Right? I mean. Uh, uh, you know, Hooke's law, for instance, we normally think, oh, okay, of course, it's proportional to, you know, displacement with constant, case spring constants, so scalar quantity for you. But generally, um, it's not the case. Whether it is Ohm's law or anything, Hooke's law, uh, it is, uh, in an isotropic medium, these things, electrical uh, conduct, it's not a scalar quantity. Uh, it has so it will have certain components, uh, and uh, so so this will be a tensor. So we want to understand what it is, you know, because basically the current flow uh, will depend on not only you know electric fields. Electric field in one direction, x direction, may produce the current in y direction or arbitrary direction. So we have to go beyond whatever we know, right? I mean, the simple scale quantities. Uh, have been influenced by tensorial quantities and the which two dimensional uh, lamp of tensor line two be nine components basically. And in some cases in Hooke's law for instance the elastic constant would be eighty one components if you had uh, no symmetry, nothing, right? I mean uh, so it's not the Hooke's law what will be has disproportional string which is a simple scalar. Here you have in a real solid, in a real system, and you push or pull a straight system, you know, whatever in some direction, this uh, the strain could be in arbitrary direction. So the elastic constant could be 81 components rather than one quantity scalar, right? Now, if it is cubic symmetry of a crystal, maybe you can reduce the number of components. So you look at the symmetry of uh, all these stress tensors, strain tensor, and you can reduce from 81 to whatever, depending on the system. So. So, so it will appear almost everywhere, hydrodynamics, semi, I mean, practically every field of physics, it's going to come. And here the complication is uh, the coordinate system that we'll be using are not a common coordinate system. So what we are going to talk today is uh, Cartesian tenses, our coordinate system is orthogonal. And so in that itself, you'll see a lot of notations that you have to learn and understand. Um, just it's the complication is the notation and then because there will be so many of these substrate and superstrate, they will have all these contractions and you will have to understand what's a summation, what's not a summation. So um, just basically understanding a lot of notations. Uh, so let me just uh, set the stage with uh, something very simple, a two-dimensional case, and then we'll uh, try to understand. So, uh, <clears throat> okay, the other thing is, the vectors that the definition that we know when we learned in high school, okay, we know physics 101, we say vector has direction and magnitude. That's the kind of a geometrical interpretation we get, uh, we get. But vectors are nothing also tensors, tensors of rank one. Scalars are also tensors of rank zero, okay. So it's a very general, when we introduce tensors, it's really a very general. Uh, uh, generalization of everything, right? I mean, uh, um, of, you know, uh, in scalars, vectors, and uh, tensors of rank two or, or higher order, right? I mean, so all of them depend on what? Nothing, how does we, all we know is physical quantities don't change much, right? And the physical laws don't change in the transformation. So, so what we try to understand is then, <clears throat> So this is again sort of coming from geometric interpretation, but we'll just uh, uh, you know, you can understand from here easily. Uh, supposing I have some position vector p, okay, so some r vector, let me say. 
we know, you know, how to represent that uh, in the unrotated coordinate system and 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 rotated coordinate system. So, what is the definition of scalar, vector, tensors, or all? determined by the loss of transformation. How does it change a position vector? You know, how, how does a quantity, a physical quantity change under, when I say transformation, we are using rotation. In principle, it need not be just rotation, it could be reflection or inversion, anything. Okay. But generally, right, right now it's all these, you know, definitions are easier with rotate, we are just uh, rotating, a rigid rotation. Yeah, did you say anything? Yeah. Uh, are these is this general trans transformation or only linear transformations? What did you say? Is this for any transformation or is it only linear transformation? We are doing rotational transformation at this point. We are rotating the coordinate system. I mean in general? In general, it could be a rotation or reflection or inversion transformation. So, so only linear transformations? Right, linear, yeah. Linear transformation, but uh, well, I thought you were trying to say that I'm just stretching in the same direction or something when you said linear, but uh, yeah. no, it, it is like rotation, reflection, or inversion. Okay. So you will see that while you know that the way the transformation takes place, like the definition of what we call as vectors, in it in in rotation may be behaving a certain law. Okay. In like even like uh, a cross b. Okay. Under reflection may be behaving slightly different, slightly the formula may change, the transformation rule may change, then we will not call it as a vector, we call it a pseudo vector or pseudo scalar. So even I'm just trying to say we are generalizing all these concepts that we know. Uh, scalar is a quantity which doesn't change in any coordinate uh, system, whether you rotate or unrotate it, whatever you're doing under transformation. That's the definition of scalar. So, uh, so basically, we are going to define all these quantities, scalars, vectors. I'm going to call the second order tens, uh, tensor, but um, you know, all of them are tensor. But uh, I have to define what is tensor, second order, and all that. They all have a certain Transformation rule. Let me, so if this will this doesn't change. Okay, vector. Some, they obey some transformation rule, and that will be the definition of vector. Not the way we were ta ta taught, you know, from long time ago. A vector is a quantity which has got certain length. It has got some direction. That's not the way the vectors are defined in tensor analysis. So it has to follow certain uh, transformation rule. So you know the way a uh, second order trans uh, tensor transforms slightly in the rotated coordinate system with respect to unrotated coordinate system, it's a fixed rule. So what are that? I mean that's what I'm going to explain what that rule is based on what way you already know of simple uh, coordinate transformation. So we know that I can write um, uh, x prime in the this is. So this is uh, x, this is your y, right? And x prime is this quantity, and y prime is what we have here. So this this is x prime, right? Projecting p on. Uh, so we are keeping the vector fixed and rotating the reference frame. That's what we are trying to do. So how how do I represent this vector r? Okay, in uh, unrotated versus uh, rotated frame. Okay, so that's that is where the definition of vectors and all come from. So this we know we can write it as x plus i. I'm, I'm, I think you can do it geometrically, and I'll also do it algebraically, which is easier. But So this is nothing but 
cosine of an angle between x prime and x. So this is x prime, uh, this is uh, x cosine theta, this is x, right? So this is x cosine theta and this is y sine theta. Okay. You can sort of uh, understand this geometry. This is y, so that, that means y sine theta. Uh, now, so what is that? Um, I can write that as cosine of angle between x prime and y. Cosine of angle between y prime and x, and this you can view as cosine of the angle between y prime and y. So, All right, this is just geometrically a little <laughs> projectile. <laughs> What is that? And this y prime, so it is uh, uh, y cosine theta. This is y, right? And uh, so that is uh, y cosine theta, and this quantity is uh, really x. This whole thing is y cosine theta. So you just uh, you know, thing geometry to look at. Now, so what are these quantities called? Do you know? So you're saying that negative sine theta is equal to cosine y uh, x yeah. or Co cosine of nine? I think must be cosine of ninety plus theta, which becomes negative sine theta. So y prime, where is y prime? This is y prime and x, right? So this is ninety plus theta. Okay. So this is really uh, cosine of ninety degrees plus theta, which is angle between y prime and x. Okay. Is this clear? I mean, you have to draw it you know, further clearly and uh, understand this. Okay, you have to just draw more parallel lines and everything. You will sort of understand why this interpretation has come. But this is sort of uh, geometrical interpretation. Okay, we can look at it. I'll explain this algebraically and get it in one minute when I try to say this. But uh, uh, what I'm trying to do, the, the transformation goal I'm trying to get for you is actually also coming from you know, this kind of a geometrical understanding of the whole stuff. Now, these are what? This is this is unrotated, this is a rotated system with respect to cosine of angle with unrotated, uh, rotated and uh, unrotated, right? And uh, so, so this, is, this is what is happening here, right? And this is x prime in uh, rotated and with respect to unrotated. There is a specific word actually, this has a definite word, this kept. Why wrote it? In terms of cosine, is because they have specific names so called direction cosines. And you might have come across that. Okay? Uh, so these are nothing but direction cosines. So whenever you rotate a coordinate system, you have direct direction uh, uh, cosines. Right? All right. Uh, so, um, so the way we normally write all these quantities is, um, you know, I'll get into the, uh, you know, the summation notation just to understand. Now, I'm going to come, com this you can think of as x1, x2, or x and y, because then I can write it for the two dimension. I can write this transformation, right? How the components of uh, this point change from x, y to uh, x prime, y prime, how did it change, is given by the following rule, basically. Uh, I'm going to call this as aij. From now onwards, aij is the direction for science. xj, j, v1, 1, 1 to 2. Okay, this is in two dimension, okay? It's three dimension, you have x, y, z, so it will go from j from 1 to 3. Okay, so these are called direction for science.
for vectors? Hmm? This is for vectors? This is vectors, yeah, exactly. Okay, this is vectors, okay? So there is, um, you can see the vectors here. This you have to draw nicely and look at it. I mean, I didn't want to go through it because uh, it's, um, you can, it's just a geometric implementation. You just, you can sort of, okay, if you want, I can do a few things so that you can understand where things are coming from. It's also for that. So yeah, you can just you know, look at it more carefully. So what we have is that we also see that partial of x prime i in the uh, rotated coordinate with respect to xj is nothing but a i j. Just to have all these definitions. For you. So vectors transform like this. So we just did it for how the position changes, but if any vector will check, you know, uh, will transform according to the same root, just as the coordinate vector changed exactly the same way, it will uh, change. So, uh, so if any quantity, basically, if any quantity, uh, I'm going to call it AI prime, now it's a vector, or let's say the I come out of the numbers vector, uh, AI j, b j, in general, if it's three dimensional, it will be j to one going from one, digit. so I'm already going to um, three. Uh, so vector is also called as tensor of rank one. And the number of components of a tensor of rank one in three dimension is uh, number of components of a tensor of rank one it is given by the formula three to the power one, which is the you know a vector in three dimension will have three components that we know, right? I mean, so by the same token, the number of components of um, scalar is three to power zero, okay? It is, so scalars are nothing but tensor of rank zero. But this has got only one component, right? And you know, scalar is just one number. Okay. Vectors we need, you know, in three dimension, you have to specify the, the component x, y, and z. So it's a tensor of rank one, okay? and you have three components. Right. Uh, now, I can also write this as partial of x, you know, you should also get into the same notation, understand this notation, and the other thing that you have to understand the notation of tensors is, whenever an index repeats, you, you drop the summation index, okay? That's because that, the reason for that is, when you're doing complex things, general relativity and all that stuff, it, is, it becomes very cumbersome, the whole thing. If you keep, you keep on having several summations, right? I mean, all that. So, so it's learning all these notations. If, if an index repeats, you will see in the book sometimes like this. But you have to remember that J, in, if an index repeats, I really, there is a summation over J. So if an index repeats, on the right hand side of, you know, repeats, on the right hand side of the equation, uh, that is implicit, that has implicit sum, actually, over. That has to be carried out, okay, the analysis, so don't forget that it is, because we do know that uh, for two dimensions, it has got what? This will be called as A11, okay? in the notation of, if I change this to x1 prime, this can also be written as a11 uh, x1 plus a12 x2, and x2 is a21 x1 plus a22 x2. Okay, so, uh, so this is prime.
So that's why you can write it in this notation. All right? <coughs> but it's really coming from you know, what we have written here. All right, now to understand this in under way, to, I just want to, because every time we're not going to be drawing this figure, actually. Uh, you know that to be, you know, that just we have been representing in the uh, algebraic notations like this also, right? In the, supposing this is my, unrotated coordinate system. And the same vector has been represented in the primed coordinate system. <clears throat> so the same vector R I can represent in, in the uh, unrotated or rotated system. Okay, so this would be the notation. If it is three dimensional, this would be the uh, notation, right? So if I now took r dot i prime, I can project it on uh, in the x direction, then what do I have? If I did that for in equation one, I have x i dot i prime plus y z dot i prime plus z k dot right? So this is what? R projected on i prime is what? How can we write? I'm trying to make the connection with what we have written. What is that? Vector R projected on i's are unit vectors in this direction, right? The maze are in that. So that is my in, the x coordinate in the rotated system. Uh, and what is this then? That is cosine theta. That's a scalar product, right? So i dot i prime is just a cosine of angle between. Uh, that's a unit vector. This is cosine of angle, right? Cosine theta. And uh, basically, uh, that's what it is. It's because this is j dot i prime. So whatever is Maybe I should write like so that you understand the sign of angle between I and I prime. The sign of angle between uh, <coughs> J and I prime. so on and so forth, you can write similarly y prime, right? You just put r dot j prime, that will give you um, um, r dot j prime is just, that will give you y prime, right? So you can write like x r dot j prime plus y plus y j dot j prime plus k dot j prime. Right? And so on and so forth. We can write down and uh, that's what we have today. Angle between i and uh, uh, i and j prime. Right? i and j prime is cosine. That, that's what we had before. So just, just to understand what we are trying to do, uh, you, know, you can do the geometrical representation or you know, this is the normal vector notation and we're just going from one coordinate system to another. What, what, what is happening when you're going from one coordinate system to another? So we should end up getting that 
R prime is equal to R. Or right. no, not, not, the, uh, no, not the direction, but the magnitude at least. Well, uh, yeah, I'm not rotated. R, I'm not even rotated, right? I mean, I'm just saying I'm fixing the position vector, okay? I'm rotating the coordinate system and what is, what is happening, right? So we have new bases. Basically, we have a new basis, right? We are representing them. Uh, R prime is uh, x prime, y prime, z prime is R prime, so you put R basically, yes. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah. so, so you know, so so you you change your basis, so and or you can think of the components have different projections, or whatever it is. So that's what is happening, right? Uh, so yeah, so so that's what is happening here. So what we are saying is now any vector. If it follows, there's only one direction cosine in this transformation. That is called as tensor of angle. Whereas, supposing I, okay, I'm going to define this in a different way. Uh, let me just um, introduce this in a different way so that you understand why we have. I'm going to leave this because I'm going to come back to the properties of uh, this transformation matrix, which is really important. Um, you know, it's an orthogonal matrix, it will become an orthogonal matrix and all that stuff. And uh, so th those are also in the thing. In some of the stuff we will be doing. Okay, supposing I have two vectors. A and B, okay, and um, so um, so A I prime because it's adjacent. I mean, index, right? Uh, so I'm going to write this as A I. Let me call it B K or something. B K sum over K. That's that's how my first vector A prime is transformed. Okay. The other vector is uh, transforming as uh, A, the direction cosine is direction cosine. Um, so the first index J, uh, whatever it is, should be here, right? L, E, L, L. Somehow it's looking like that, which I can write as what? Summation K summed over L, A, I, K. A J L B K B L. Okay, that's how this quantity product. Uh, it, it's called outer product, right? I don't have a dot or cross or anything, so it's outer product of two vectors. When I do that, then what? What, what did I get? I have got. Uh, Two direction direction cosines, okay, and um, and I'm summing over k and l and all that. So this is how a tensor. So this is also all I just constructed under quantity under uh, physical quantity. And in principle, any quantity, uh, the, the, like the way in terms of Ohm's law, the conductivity tensor, which is second order, will transform like this. Any quantity which transforms with two direction cosines. Tensor, okay, we'll, uh, let me call now uh, by a different uh, variable, okay, D, but, but it's got two indices now, okay, D, I, J, okay, that's now a tensor, okay, uh, but I'm sh I showed that through product of two vectors, they are product of two vectors leads to a tensor of rank two, okay, that, you, the way to build the tensor high rank of the thing is you just add, this is tensor rank one, this is a tensor rank one, so when you multiply two tensors of rank one, it gives you a tensor of uh, rank two. You just add up, you know, the ranks to get them, and the indices correspondingly will have two indices. That will be a tensor of rank two. Okay. This K L. Okay. Uh, 
I can also write it as the, in this notation. Okay, maybe this is a, a, it will also be important, useful somewhere. So just remember this are nothing but uh, uh, D uh, G. So this will be D K. So any quantity which transforms with two, two direction cosines like that is called as second order and uh, second. Now, the Levi-Civita symbol that you come across, you look at it, it's got I, J, K, right? It's got three indices, right? So it's a rank of what order? Three, right? And what's the transformation rule? You already now know. You understand that's how they built. Now, this one, uh, how many components does it have? This is, a uh, vector has what? Three, uh, three components. This has got nine, nine components. And let me show you that symbol will have what? Uh, so it is uh, three, three cube, right? So it'll have twenty seven components and all that stuff. stuff. Okay. So, so because I've already introduced that, you understand that something like this under under rotation uh, will transform like AI or P uh, A J Q uh, A K R Epsilon P Q R summation P Q R. Okay, so so it's got three direction cosines in the transformation, rigid transformation from unprimed coordinates to prime coordinates. So that would be a uh, tensor of prime cubes. Okay. Again, have three cube components. Three represent the dimensionality in which we are working. I mean, if you're working four dimensional, which also we come across because in uh, electrodynamics we'll always be working on space and time. So it will be four dimensional vector. You will come across four dimensional, uh, you know, maximum tensor is uh, four dimensional, right? I mean, so, uh, you know, then accordingly, and rank three. So here, the, in this case, we're three dimensional. So, so this represents the dimensionality and this represents the rank. One more thing I want to okay, I, I would like to add more properties here uh, because uh, once you realize, I mean, this is really, if I leave it like this, right? These are your components A11, A12, A21, A22, right? Uh, so what we have is um, uh, X1, X2 is nothing but, sorry, prime is A11, A12, A21, A22. Now what does it say about this matrix A? This is the rotation matrix. For you, uh, that you have the values here exactly, so that's why it's easier to look at everything. A11 one, one is cosine theta, right? I mean, so this rotation in two dimension, this this matrix is also <coughs> cosine theta, sine theta, minus sine theta. Uh, 
three dimension with rotating with respect to uh, x, z axis will be 0, 0, 1, right? I mean, that's all. 0, 0, 1, we get rotating with respect to z axis. But let us just stay here two dimensions to understand. Can you see A, A transposes uh, identity uh, with one? Or let's, okay, and the column vectors are what's happening. If you square the, if, if I dot the column vector, what happens? I just want you to sort of understand the meaning of this uh, matrix, which is, uh, I just want you to, but this is my rotation mat matrix in two dimensions, right? I'm trying to uh, ask a question about what are the properties of this matrix? Permission. Hmm? Permission. No, sorry, it's not, it's not my name. Okay, what is the uh, A, uh, A transpose of this uh, matrix? A12 has become negative A21, mm -hmm. uh, right? That the mm -hmm. property is there, right? I mean, so um, that is the AIJ is, uh, you know, is negative AJI, right? I mean, that, that property is there. Um, so A, A times A transpose is an identity matrix in this case, right? So we have A transposes A inverse. Right. So this is the matrix. We have um, A, A transpose in this matrix it is an identity matrix. A transpose is what? Um, A transpose is the sign of theta, the sign of theta. Uh, so if you multiply by that matrix, you have the identity matrix here. So such matrix are, are also orthogonal matrix. And one more property of the, uh, the orthogonal proper, uh, matrix is the following, that uh, uh, so this matrix, we can look because the numbers are there, so it's easier to in mathematical it's easy to understand it. Uh, so this uh, rotation matrix has the prop following properties. So, um, so what that means is uh, A11, uh, A12, right? Uh, A1, uh, that's the, uh, I'm going over, fix the row and going over different colors, okay? Uh, plus this one is A21, A22, what is that? 
this is what because sine theta sine theta negative sine theta sine theta that's equal to zero. Right. So that's what is happening there. So this this will this uh, wait, uh, I can see it there, right? So this is written in this notation okay, of summation. Signs that we have have to satisfy this property. Okay, there's our uh, elements A I J. If you are using an orthogonal coordinate system, this property will, ha will have to be satisfied. Okay, uh, it will not be the case in in a curvy <coughs> process or or you know or something which is not orthogonal. You know, the basis vectors are not orthogonal to each other. Those things will not be there. So this is very particular to the Cartesian tensors that you have. This property, the, the elements of the rotation matrix have to satisfy this property. So correspondingly, we have another relation that uh, we did it that way, right? I mean, they fix the uh, row index and then over the thing. You can fix the column. I can also do that way. Okay, that's also zero. So I can have a j. Um, uh, I can the analog of that. You can do the, the other thing. You see is the following. Uh, we also have this property, a1 square plus a2 1 square, in this case, is equal to 1. Cosine squared plus sine, sine squared. So the, the square of these direction cosine, they have almost like a property of a unit vector. Okay, so it, it, the length of that vector is uh, 1. In the direction of cosine. So I'm going to put all these things together for you. What is the meaning of direction cosine? Uh, we know that this is what is happening. We transform the coordinates. Uh, X prime becomes that. What I'm going to say is the direction cosines are nothing but the basis of the new coordinate system. That's all it is. I mean, I just want to show that to you uh, explicitly. So the meaning, uh, and the meaning of direction cosine, it's nothing but you have rotated, your basis has changed. And what has to happen is that your basis has changed by how much the amount of the amount of which has changed the direction of science. Okay, so, so all these things will come together now with the different parts of it that I'm trying to But this, in your tenses, if you look at books, they never go through, you know, they'll just write it and they will not go through the physical meaning of certain things. So you have to get more of it. The rest of it is just, uh, once you know that, the rest of them is just technique. I mean, just uh, learning the skills. Um, but you have to, under, you know, sort of to appreciate, you know, all these things, where it is coming from, really coordinate transformation, and how, you know, different quantities transform. That dictates, uh, you, know, uh, you know, the order of the tensor and all that. And some of the properties of the rotation matrix, of the transformation matrix, you have to know. It's an orthogonal matrix. And it will follow see, all of our matrix. The rows have to be, rows and column vectors have to uh, be equal to zero. And if you're sitting in the same column, the magnitude of that must be equal to one. Okay? So that's all uh, the app can do. So. But is this clear up to this point? <coughs> okay. This is in a unrotated frame, some like a unit vector along x direction. So I'm just trying to see what's happening to this in the current system. This is what uh, we just want. Just a little bit of notation, but that's it. <coughs> Thank you. 
components of the pair are transforming in the prime coordinates of the plane. <coughs> of this vector uh, in the n prime, u2 is 0, u3 is 0, u1 is 1, right? So these are, it's 0, these are 0. And u1 is 1. So what it's telling you is that uh, uh, u1, uh, u1 prime is nothing but uh, in the rotator frame, the component of that has become that. Basically, this basis has changed. One has become a one, right? Uh, u two prime has become u two one, and u three prime has become a three one. Right? So basically, the unit vector i. I'm just now going back to this. One zero zero. You can call that notation. I prime which is in the rotated frame, has become A1, A2, 1, A3, 1. That, those are the components of this unit vector in the rotated frame. Okay, so basis, yeah, vector, uh, your basis has changed, that's all in the rotated frame. So the direction for size are nothing but the new basis in the rotated frame. So that's another way of understanding what these direction for size are. Okay, so we have different ways of understanding this. I mean, geometrically, this is what works. I mean, uh, uh, that, uh, this is what this is. So, J prime. So, you can do the same exercise. So, you can just get J prime has become uh, J prime is square set. J prime will be in the zero. I have to prove that I'm doing zero. So, so U2 will survive. In that case, it will become a one two, a two two, a two two, and a prime. In the rotated frame, the basis vector will become a one three, a two three, and a two two. So we just said a vector is something which we transform uh, in this form, any vector. Components of vector. And we transform like that. Or I can write it like this also, portion of. Uh, xi prime over xj uj. All right, there's one more complication. <laughs> what we call a vector is normally, is really what is called as contra in other few. L luckily, in Cartesian coordinates, there's a difference between uh, general related and it becomes important. This, you know, when you have in the direction for sign, x prime is in the numerator and prime coordinate is a, a, a numerator and n prime is the denominator, this kind of transformation is called contravariant vector. It's not, we don't use the word vector, we call this, there are two types of one is called contravariant. And it's a vector transform, transform in this way. Here and this uh, prime in the denominator, 
This is called a scobating vector, okay, if the vector transform. Luckily for us, I'm not going to, you know, they will also not use the notation. Whenever you have contravariate vector, they're not even put it as a suffix. They put it as a superscript kind of a thing. I mean, so you have to, you know, what we are normally used to do, we put the component as subscript. You know, they put it as a superscript just to understand the transformation rule. You have to keep track of all these. Uh, bookkeeping has to be, you know, you have to keep you know, all these things. But for in Cartesian coordinates, what happens is this quantity is exactly equal to that quantity. I'm going to prove that to you. Okay, so I don't have that complication, but if you're going to do general relativity, that complication will be there. You have to understand. Okay, so uh, in Cartesian coordinates, This quantity is exactly equal to partial HT with respect to this quantity. So I'm not going to you know, make the distinction. I'm going to put the, um, I, although I know, if even though it's, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, prime coordinates upstairs, I'm going to use the normal notation because they are the same. So I don't want to keep track of that. It's, uh, so, so I just want you to understand, you'll see all these things. So a lot of definitions, uh, contravariant vector, uh, covariant vector, pseudo vector, and stuff like that. So I want to um, <coughs> talk about all these things also. Um, maybe since I did, yeah, OK, so let me prove this and maybe come to pseudo vector. Pseudo vector is something, uh, you know, as I said, it's not in the rigid rotation. It could be any transformation we're talking about, right? This is a very general the formulation. Although it showed it to you for rigid rotation, it is really very general. And uh, so you will have, uh, in fact, the determinant of A that we have, uh, uh, determinant A squared, I think determinant of A squared is actually 1. So a determinant of a could be plus or minus 1. Okay. Uh, so if, it's, if it is negative 1, so you, you, you have in, in, in those transformations, if you know, it's a pseudo vector, you also have this kind of a thing. It transforms like this. Uh, I'm going to now remove the summation notation because you know if there's a summation. Okay. Determinant of a, a i j, u j, whenever the index repeats, you have to be some, you know, you have to sum over whatever the dimensionality of n1 or n2 or 2, right? So that is there. So this, the transformation rule, if a trans, if a vector transform lies like this, where determinant of a is equal to negative 1, that's called a pseudo vector. Similarly, you have the terminology pseudo tensor. I mean, you have you know, except the root, you know, it's a Cartesian pseudo tensor of set rank two, you'll have uij, let's say some of the two indices, you'll have this, you'll have two direction cosines, and uj, uk, or, or djk, whatever it is, okay? So you have similar thing, except what it is taking care of is, okay, transformation could not necessarily be rigid rotation, it could be reflection and uh, inversion, whatever it is. In those cases, signs can change, so, so this is sort of more general definition of vector. Okay, so that's not even this is start vector direction magnitude. Okay, now get it out. And then transformation like that. Okay, yeah. So this is the most general one where if a is plus one, it's a it's a <coughs> it's a normal vector, and uh, <coughs> otherwise it's a pseudo vector. Okay. And also we have this, given the uh, definition of covariant and contravariant vectors. But I just want to see, oops, you know, why did, basically projection of uh, x prime on, why are they same, right? I mean, uh, that we have to understand. I'm going to prove that to you in a minute. Um, that's the reason I'm not going to make a distinction between the two things. Is the covariant vector tied to the covariance matrix? What do you say? Is the covariant vector tied to the covariance matrix? Co co covariant matrix? Yes. What do you mean covariant matrix? Uh, like for principal component analysis or 
um, singular value decomposition and linear algebra? Like, it, are they meaningfully connected, or is it a um, just a combination of words that are common? I uh, I don't know actually. I mean, um, what? Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, I I I don't want to say anything about it. But I'm just trying to say why I'm trying to be hesitant is a tensor of rank two looks like matrix, right? So you know, we do have covariant tensor. Right, I mean, so it may be connected with the transformation rules. I, I do not know. I mean, I don't, I don't want to make a comment about that. Um, uh, maybe they are related, but uh, because you know, the only difference between people get confused between a tensor and matrix, again, okay? but they are not quite the same, they're different because you know, a matrix uh, which has got nine components, you know, the, it is the in terms of the basis is changing, right? I mean, it's coming from there. So in that sense, they're not identical. I mean, people get confused, but they're not. But uh, yes, I mean, basically what I'm oh yeah. A tensor also has matrix elements it's and direction. There are two unit vectors, right? I mean, uh, so you have, you can think of the matrix nine components as the magnitude of uh, the components, right? It is like a vector. And direction unit vector. So matrix does not matrix has only that part without direction. So there is a difference in, in that sense. Uh, yeah, but maybe there is some connection between that. I have, I, I do not know. I don't want to make a comment about it. <coughs> There's some there somewhere I read that the word perhaps here comes uh, covariant uh, when you transform the base the you know somehow the basis is in sync with co in uh, there's a connection between e1 prime and e1 prime it's not totally unrelated so that's where the covariance the word covariance was introduced in tensor I mean that's what uh, uh, you know something somewhere just reported um, you know, because this word is a little bit you know comp you don't understand why why you know one is covariant one is contravariant the word contravariant means it's not really in sync basically if you change the um, basis in contravariant they are not totally in sync the new basis and the old basis are not totally in sync so that is the amount by which you if you, this is not easy to understand in terms of rotation but in terms of just stretching or something you can understand the amount by which the basis vector changes is not in sync in the country. And that is how, that's where the word was introduced, or the terminology was introduced. That's, that's what, uh, you know, anyway, because I was also curious why they call this word COVID and country, right? I mean, it came from. Uh, so. All right, let's. Uh, So what we have seen is this, right? Or to transform uh, from unprimed to prime system, this is the transformation rule that components of the vector have to satisfy. This is what we have done. <coughs> so let me just multiply this by AIK. I index repeating. So really, it also means I have summation over I. So it's implicit. 
So this is same as summation i, summation j, a i j, a i k, x j, which I can write as What is this? Summation of i, a i j, a i k, the orthogonal unless j equal to k, right? I mean, that's what we had shown. This is a, this is your uh, direction cosine matrix, transformation rotation matrix. So this is nothing but delta j k. So, so that you have to chronicle the function delta j k. So xi prime aik is summation j uh, delta of jk xj. So summation over j, j is equal to k, so this is nothing but xk. So what we have is x of k is xi prime aik. Or I can have, uh, which I can also write it as, uh, I can change index if you want, so that I can uh, make it go to that. Uh, so what I have is, This is summation over i, right? I got an index at like this. Uh, so I can write this as x of k. So what I have is x of k is xi prime ai k. This is a dumb index, so I, it doesn't matter whether I just uh, can, uh, or I can write this as x of j, whether that's what I want to do, right? Uh, xi prime uh, ai take something that I can write down. So what, what I have is partial of aij is nothing but partial of, it's also the same as partial xj with respect to xi prime. So, so when we write here, aij is what? Partial x prime, xi prime with respect to xj. What we are saying is this aij is same as partial of xj with respect to xi prime. And what is only thing which we are exploited here is the autumn property of the rotational matrix. Okay. Uh, so just uh, just for, for you to know, this is the this is the case of that. Uh, so the rotational matrix is orthonormal. Orthogonal. Ortho ortho yeah, orthogonal, or, yeah, yes. Orthogonal and, or, and, and the column vectors of uh, unit vector, and length is one, yes. Length of the vector, uh, of the column vector is exactly one, yeah. So uh, that, that's the property it is being used here. How do we identify the column vector in rank n items? In n in, in a matrix, in an n-dimensional one? Rank n. Huh? Rank n. Rank n. Mm -hmm. So it's n, again, okay, rank n will have your index. This is some tensor, right? I have i, j, k, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So that is what, that's the, the rank is coming from how many index you've got and how many direction cosines you've got. Right, so which one of those, i, j, k, l, etc., is the column? You said the column has to be 1. 
of the direction to sun, I'm just saying. I mean, uh, I, 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 this, when we are doing that property, right, I mean, the matrix A, if it is n-dimensional, I mean, uh, you will have more, whatever, this is what's the three, uh, nine components, right? Mm -hmm. So you'll have more components here, right? I mean, uh, typically I'm just writing here now, a, a four by, let us say. So then here, this will be a column vector, whatever it is, right? Uh, 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 A1, one, this is the A12, so A1, one, one, uh, this, this is 4, this is 4, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, four. So is it fair to say your first indice is your column? Each, each one of these columns will have unit length. Right, but what I mean mm -hmm. is in the general sense where you have I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Yeah. So if, if, uh, if everything with the same I, has unit length. To the same eye. Basically, if you have like a if, if you have like a tensor of rank n where you've got let's let's call it phi phi length. yeah let's four phi whatever it is right I mean uh, let's instead of the general right I mean what let's say what okay uh, a one phi so this is a right not of dimension n it's of rank n. Ra rank the uh, the rotation matrix doesn't matter, right? The direction cosine is one. I mean, the only thing what you have is more in a rank, right? I mean, uh, if you have, you know, uh, you will have more stuff right here, A I L. There are more more things here, and this this will not be a uh, then this is not a, we are doing this for only for vector transformation. That we are not generalizing this thing for anything. Else. This this quantity is your partial. All I'm trying to say is each direction for sign will have this kind of property. That's all we are trying to say. In a rank, uh, you will have, you know, the fifth order, you will have five such direction for signs. What I'm trying to say is only this you know, the property that they're, you know, uh, of each one of them, and they're expressing in terms of uh, rotator and rotated coordinates, uh, they follow this property, and that, all those things are all, anyway, what I just do, yeah. That, and I thought you were talking about the, the matrix A, what happens in, yeah, so it, it, this will depend on the dimensionality of the system. For, you know, normally we, have, we go to four dimensional in, uh, in space time, like, uh, so the, Electrodynamics will have four dimensions, but uh, in what space we're talking about that's something else. But uh, uh, but generally you'll have, I think, uh, in electrodynamics you'll have some four dimensional vectors. You know, and some of them are electrically, some of them are uh, something like that. You know, so kind of yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I got them to you said rank. Uh, yeah. Okay. There's one thing you wanted to say. What is this? Um, Maybe I think. Yeah. Right. Covariant vector, right? I mean, uh, uh, maybe I should give an example where it appears, right? I mean, for the physical example. Is a vector, right? I mean, phi is scalar, but gradient of phi is a vector. The components of the gradient vector, how it transforms, will have the covariant form automatically. So those vectors automatically are in that form. Uh, we'll have a partial phi under system. Um, so this is what summation of partial notation. So that's why you need to know both notation AI and all this AI J notation as well as 
in terms of partial derivatives. Okay. Next G. So this is your direction cosine ADI or whatever you want to call it. So that transforms like a covariant vector automatically. Okay, so that's an example of covariant vector. Uh, gradient five transforms like a covariant vector because you would have the current coordinates, but your coordinates are in the denominator. So this is an example of a covariant vector. All right, let's see. Uh, let me just quickly maybe jump and talk about something which may be interesting. Uh, let us say, okay, uh, the, the other property which I forgot to say is uh, one, if, if you multiply two vectors, you get a tensor of blank two, right? Be one. Now, if you contract the indices, you decrease um, if, uh, if you set two indices equal. It goes down by two. Every time you contract two pair of uh, indices, um, it uh, goes down. Let me uh, illustrate that with maybe something like Levy shift does symbol or something like that, which is uh, you know, instructed. It's represented by this symbol. You know the property that if, if they are in cyclic order, the magnitude of that is one. If they're not, that's i, j, k, i it goes from one to three, let's say. J goes also from one to two, all of them. So if they are in cyclic order, like it's one, two, three, it's one. If it's one, three, two, it's negative one. Okay, so that's the property of this quantity. And if two indices are equal, then it is zero. This is the property of this third rank. Electronic and delta country very special, right? If the indices are same, it's one, otherwise zero. So the Levy shift symbol is also has the special property. So this is a third order tensor. If two indices are equal, then it is zero. JK are uh, taken in cyclic order. Like epsilon 1, 2, 3, or epsilon 2, 3, 1, if they are all 1. If they are not in cyclic order, One, one, two, that is equal to zero because two indices are repeating. Because that's a property of this alternating tensor. So, this is sort of useful in uh, uh, many times, and uh, we use it for representing uh, cross products and stuff like that, right? I mean, uh, the angular momentum vector, uh, uh, you would write it in that notation. So, for instance, L is R cross P, right? 
So Alex, you know that you can write it as what? ypz minus zky, and so on and so forth, right? So let me write it like n1 less than uh, x2 so that I can write it in compact notation, uh, x3 and 2, right? That and so you can write down others. Now, because the sign is changing, this whole thing, we can write it in the in, in terms of the alternating tensor is what epsilon i j k x j and k. So if you see it in this notation, um, <coughs> what it means is to get i equal to 1, you have to sum over j and k. Okay, that's the summation is implicit. That's how l equals 1, what do you get? I'll mean, just do it for 1, you can just see. L1 is 1, 2, 3, because I put j equal to x2, p3, right? And then plus uh, <coughs> l equal to 1, so I have uh, other one would be 1, 3, 2, uh, x3, p2, right? Others would be 0 because if I have put no, here uh, 1, 1 or something, the two indices would repeat, so then it would be 0. And this is not in the cyclic order, so that is negative 1. So you can write L1 is nothing but x2, uh, 3, x3, 2, right? And uh, so that's where this concise notation comes from. Uh, so we use it in several locations, um, this notation. I think uh, the other location that we use is determinant of A. How can we write determinant of A in terms of uh, epsilon i j k? Some vector, uh, some matrix A. If I had to write what? It will be, let me just write down. Um, this is what we're trying to do, right? A to 1, A to 2, A to 3, A to 1, A to 2, A to 3. So just let, let's do uh, I equal to 1, uh, J equal to 2. A to the B and then check that, okay? So we have epsilon 1, 2, 3, A11, one, one. Uh, A23, A22, two, three, A three, two, and I have summation. All this means what I have to sum over? I, J, K, because they are repeating indices, so really you have other things. Uh, then epsilon 1, uh, let's put J equal to 3, let's pick up this now. Um, 1, 3, 2, and what do we have? Uh, what have we done? Uh, A11. That has not changed. A11. Uh, A2. 2 has become uh, 3. Uh, J has become 3. Uh, this is what? A. K has become 2. Right? Is it? Uh, repeat that, right? The first time was if J was 2, K was 3. Right? So this was, this should really be 3. This was this is the, uh, so that's just uh, you know. So you can see that this term is negative, right? Uh, this is one. So that is this term. A11, A22, A, A2, uh, A33 minus A23, A32. And you have to go on because they have all the summation. So basically, it's going to reproduce your determinant A. Uh, yeah, making the concise notation. So you will see it in this notation also. So it's sort of Whenever you got something changing sign, you can use, you know, F, you can see whether you can use FL IJK to write it in a precise notation. Okay, so, so I think uh, this is uh, something uh, you will, I'm sure you're using already all these things. Uh, I just wanted to give you one more thing that is interesting, uh, which ex explains to you about uh, 
contraction of the tensors because we need to know some properties so to use it. So nothing but this can be written as uh, determinant of the following quantity. Okay. In tense analysis, whenever you have an identity to be proved, the only way to do it is Previously, you know, just do bring everything up. I equal to one, j equal to two, j three, and you know, see what happens to the property and say right hand side equal to left hand side. Okay, that's how we do all the identities. Okay, so this is a what? What's the uh, rank of this tensor? Multiply two tensors. Uh, how to get the rank of the product of the tensors? You multiply a i a j to get d i j sense of rank two, right? You can just add the rank of each one. So this is rank of this tensor is six. Okay, this is got three indices. Rank is three. It will transform with three direction cosine. This product will transform with six direction cosines. I mean, whatever it is, you know, eventually. That, that's how you have it. You visualize all these things. So let us now understand the property of contraction, right? Let me just put, uh, this has got lots of interesting properties, actually. Okay, what is the rank of this uh, tensor now? set two indices, the rank goes by two. So it was six, the rank of this tensor is four. Okay. And um, this uh, is also, um, you know, this is actually equal to this identity. This is direct of the function. Okay? Oh, sorry, chronicle of the function. Okay, Jn, <coughs> Kn, so it, it, all these things can be proved from here. Okay? I'm not proving that right now, but I just want to emphasize the meaning of contraction and what happens. Uh, now I'm going to put uh, m equal to j. Uh, so I have i, j, k, epsilon i, j, n. I got two indices, and now repeating. Okay. <coughs> Thing. M is equal to J, right? That's what we have done. Delta of Kn. Uh, okay. Uh, so first, tell me what's the rank of this? Two. That's two. Yes. Two. The rank is two. And now the important thing I want to understand is this. How, what is the right hand side? I mean, the, what is delta jj? This is repeating. This index is repeating. So I have to really sum over j. We know that the, the indices are, you know, don't think of this. In tensor, this is the thing you have to think about, right? J 
just don't put it as one, so you're going to get the wrong answer. Because this really means any index, uh, you know, when it repeats, you have to sum over that index. So this is nothing but j runs from 1 to 3, okay? Delta 1, 1, plus delta 2, 2 plus delta 3, 3. So this is 3 times delta k. And what does this say? This says uh, j is equal to n, okay? There's two index, nothing is, uh, in this case, perhaps, yeah. Uh, Yeah, I mean, okay, say j is equal to n, so that becomes delta kn. So this becomes uh, 2 times delta of kn, which is rank of second order because it's got two, two, uh, two indices only, which you can check also, right? I mean, you uh, know the contraction group. Uh, now you contract one more time, you contract uh, the third time, but what do I have to set up? Oh, okay, good. Uh, k equal to n. So I have i j k i j k uh, k equal to 1. Uh, so 2 times uh, mn k k. So this is nothing but 6. So this identity <coughs> is epsilon i j k, epsilon i j k, when all these things are same, is nothing but, so what's the rank of this? So what's that? Okay. It's a scale, because it's number, right? It's a scale. So this is scale. So, so, so whenever indices repeats, you have to sum, and uh, <coughs> that's the only thing. And it can, if that product of two things, you know, you, it also reduces the rank of the tensor by order two. Okay. Uh, so it's become, so basically we started the sixth order uh, tensor, you know, we reduced to fourth order, second order, and then a scalar. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of tricks like this, but I just, at least we, I just want to give some exposure in terms of what tensors are. Basically, it's nothing but change of basis which results in a very gentle definition of scalar vectors or scalars and vectors are nothing but tensors basically it's a very gentle transformation rule depending on how many coordinates of transformation are there so i just want to uh, ask you something uh, uh, What I want to emphasize, supposing I have something like that, I put two, I, I need, I have two indices, okay? Is it a tensor of rank two? That, that's right, sort of, I'm going to ask you a question. I can also make it uh, No, it's not. Yeah, that's what it, it has to be BX. Uh, if I have, this is what I want. Just because it's got two indices, it's not a tensor, okay? It has to transform exactly like this. You got two direction cosines which you're multiplying each other, with, with, with each other right? I mean, um, uh, Uh, so you must have direction cosines like this separate. Just because you have 
to me, this is something describing, it doesn't automatically, it is not automatically a tensor. You may have second derivative of something, right? I mean, some uh, like many, many problems you might have. Uh, like a, so just make sure that that is not following the transformational rule. This is the transformational rule, so it's a little strict, and so you just have to understand it just because something has got indices, it's not automatically a tensor. So the transformation rule has to be looked at. I think um, maybe I just hit on the essential things up. Chronic data function uh, has one important property in this tensor. When you transform, it has the same value in any coordinate system. So it's called an isotropic tensor. I mean, all these, there are lots of terminologies like this. Okay. It's all. Function, uh, sorry, chronic data function is an isotropic tensor because uh, it does not change. Uh, its components do not change. It's one or zero, right? And its um, components uh, do not change in any coordinate system. Then there's another property for, especially for Cartesian tensors, any second order uh, uh, tensor can be written as you know, some of a symmetric and an anti-symmetric tensor. Okay, this is a, this is important in quantum mechanics, uh, that, uh, so you could write it as. <coughs> Tij, I can put a J. In symmetric tensor, this is a symmetric part, Tij equal to Tji. And here it is, Tij is uh, negative Tji. So you can always write it like this. And uh, that has an important thing because uh, it can lead to, <coughs> uh, you know, what's called a spherical tensors, which can reduce the number of components. Normally it's what L cubed, right? You reduce the number of components to 2L plus 1, so which helps in you know, how to go. So the first step in all the thing is writing a second order condition tensor in terms of symmetric. This is this is something we use quite often. And as I already mentioned about pseudo, pseudo vectors uh, or something which transforms with the, you know, So these are the terminologies I think uh, you will come across. This, um, this also, we mentioned covariant and contravariant. This also mixed tensor, like a chronic delta function is actually a mixed tensor of uh, isotropic center, uh, isotropic and also mixed tensor. That is one, it's a second order tensor, right? One component goes like a contravariant, the other one goes as a covariant. So uh, I'm just going to like, I'm not going to superscript, but you can understand what I'm trying to say. One of them will be um, xi prime, the other one will go like xj, x prime kind of thing. Uh, it really, it's, so chronic delta, in, in the strictest sense, there's some books will write not like delta ij, they would write it like delta i, let us say if it was. Uh, 
prime is uh, that is superscript, okay? And the prime and the superscript here, because uh, that is, uh, and this will be L, and this one will be, uh, okay, I have a little book of it. It's easy to write it. But what, what I want to say is you have both this, both after and both. It's easy to write first and then. AI, K, A, G, L, Delta, L, K, right? So, and what I want to say is this part of it, one of them transforms. I might change the rotation. In the strictest in some books, it will be like, like this. Uh, X, Xi prime over X, K, okay? And then, uh, and I'll change the superscript also. Let me just get this correct. Delta of uh, xj uh, over xl prime. superscript, let me put this, okay, now I'm connecting to the right mutation, okay, this is in the superscript, so I have to put it like that, uh, J, J is in the, uh, it's, it, that is transformed like a covariant vector, so uh, this is L, so this will put as a superscript, so you must really write a transformation for chronic delta function like this, so this is what is called as mixed tensors, okay? Basically, one of them uh, transforms, uh, this is like our contravariant, right, I mean vector. Um, and this transforms like a covariant. Okay. So that's a thing with lots of great tenses, you have to do, it's just nothing but knowing the rules, notations. And this is, if, they, if you think this is complicated, come to metric tensors and general integrity, you have to nothing to keep bookkeeping of all these things are. In fact, Mathematica uh, Lutheran has come up with, uh, for just for people who work on general relativity, how to deal with it, basically. You have to do lots of contractions and this and that. That's not easy to keep the bookkeeping. And um, so they have one of their own notebooks is just on general relativity, people who work on general relativity. A friend of mine working on his PhD in cosmology and general relativity, and I asked him, what does your average day of work look like? And he says, he said, a whole lot of plugging equations into Mathematica and staring at them. Before Mathematica, it was reams and reams of paper, okay? Mathematica, in the olden days, that's what they did, right? I mean, keeping track of all these things, it's not easy. It's it's just a pain in the neck. I mean, I'm, I'll just be happy to do this in second or rank partition tensor. <laughs> I right. don't so, yeah. Uh, yeah. I took a class in undergrad, and they, when you uh, write Christoffel symbols, uh, yeah. it's never on the fourth derivatives, you just write, you know, like comma, mm -hmm. and for covariant derivative, it's semicolon. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I mean, I, we've not even come to tensor calculus, right? We have just tensor algebra, we're doing it, it's fine. Once you take the derivatives, there's a new set of uh, headaches. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, you must have a lot of patience, I think, with the tensor. But, you know, but it is useful because it gives a concise notation, that's all it is. I mean, yeah. right, we are not, I mean, so basically, yes, just, you know, all these things are not, you know, tensor calculus we start doing, you have to use crystals and crystal symbols and all that stuff. Right? And anyway, so uh, I, I think um, I just wanted to cover the basic because uh, you may come across, uh, I mean, definitely in solid state basic, you know, doing elastic constants and stuff like that. Electromagnetic theory, the, you know, you will come across that, um, you know, the maximum tensor when you write it in terms of electric and magnetic field and write it in a very concise notation. I think there it's very useful because the four Maxwell's equations are written in two. Right? 
it and, uh, and uh, it's a full recognition of the recognition has got the scale of what also right in it. So, yeah. so that, there it is, a little bit neat and nice and so concise notation. But, uh, but it, it basically you have to do a contraction uh, and uh, the number to do the summation. Although we write for us to say space, in the olden days, they, that's what they always use, use some names of paper, right? So they were not putting some explicit summation, which they kept, kept track of. In fact, it was only for those reasons. But, um, but, it, you know, but unless you remember it, you may make mistakes, lots of mistakes. So it's just <coughs> lots of rules that you have to learn. And, uh, Okay, so uh, quickly uh, we have the, the last test on Thursday, right? And I'm just wondering whether I should give some basic that tells you something you have to learn or something, but uh, at least definitions, but uh, that's up to you. So. It helps us with other tests? Tensors. <laughs> Please don't give me nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that depends. What is the, what is the other test made out of? Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. No, exactly. That's a good reason. <laughs> well, what questions would we be, would be, be trading out? And actually do no, 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 no. Basically, you know, simple contraction uh, you know, rules. I mean, if, if, if you're given that, what happens to it, right? I mean, like the way I did for the six, that's why I did the six dimensional Lodicivita symbol where you saw what happened, right? I mean, uh, simple things like that. Nothing more complicated. Just the rules, right, that you're able to handle. Contraction is the main thing, right? And whether you're given a thing, can you tell me the rank of the tensor, right? And, then, uh, and we know the transformation rule. What are the transform? If I say, okay, I have some arbitrary tensor of sixth order like this, what's the transformation rule? You know, and so the only thing is, it is those are things. These important things, uh, and uh, everything depends on the rotation matrix, which is the property of rotation matrix. To, to it's everything. It's all on the matrix, and um, that's why you know some of these AIJ and all that we can you know we can put it as from the delta function all that stuff. Otherwise, which simplifies many of the expressions too. Right? Um, so yeah, it's it's just general things. I'm not excited about that. If you, if you have time to read, because you got one more day to read, just you know yeah, I don't know where you are because um, with your preparation like. Um, if you're comfortable with the complex analysis, and is there any questions there? I mean, Actually, I do have a question. You said that um, we need to know the um, the proof for the uh, Cauchy residue uh, theorem. Like that, yeah. yeah. Like, um, yeah. However, there was two you gave. You gave one was formal, one was like a quick one. I think the quick one is good. The formal one is very hard, right? Because you have to do Lorentz expansion. And, I mean, that's where it comes from. The definition came from that. Uh, but I think um, the short one is fine because that all is also, it's very precise, right? It, 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 um, and, then what kind, and then what kind of knowledge of it? Is it going to be solve this question using the, like, it from first principles, or is it going to be, like, just say what the fruit, like, do the fruit? I mean, if I say, uh, you know, I mean, because in the past, if I say, oh, this is like the equation, that's not what I'm looking for, right? I mean, um, and um, or like uh, an, uh, you know analytic functions you know for a complex function to be analytic, what properties you know what is it? I mean what, all these things we have done right? I mean uh, the Cauchy one condition we did, uh, Cauchy's integral formula and um, Cauchy residue theorem. These are the important things in a sense. Right? I mean eventually in the long run that's what you're going to remember. The most important things you have to remember, right? Uh, all the little things you know you will not remember, but uh, these are just the basic things. Uh, it is if a function of to, you know, can do function to do zero, right? I mean, so there we use the analytic suit for a proof of complex function as well as uh, the Green's theorem we used, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, so things like that so, uh, you should know um, because you know, that's what we did. We put those things and then we applied it. Uh, so, I hope you are comfortable calculating residues of functions and stuff like that. I mean, uh, if it is pole of higher order, remember to take the derivatives of second order, depending on what is the order of the pole, right? And, and um, so those are the things you need to know. And uh, the types of contour, and why does, if it is a semi-circular, 
there may be integrants where this, it may not go to zero. Then we cannot use uh, we, we cannot use uh, this, uh, this theorem at all to solve such problems, right? So you need to give justification why you know what it became zero because it to Jordan's lemma or just because of the integrand the way it is. So some some you don't need Jordan's lemma to make it go to zero in the sense of the R. So all the justification steps have to be there. When, when you say, when you say use Jordan's lemma, mm -hmm. um, is it enough to say to break up the function into e to the i m i m z, and then g of x, and then say max of g of x as we go to infinity is zero, we're good. And, or m, you is, have to and m is greater than zero, otherwise it does not. It, yeah. Yeah, right. Sorry, so uh, the two condition, you know, this is in a, this is following that. But if I ask you to prove Jordan's lemma, you should be able to prove that, right? I mean. But I'm just, it is in the upper half plane, m has to be greater than zero, and f of z, the maximum value of f of z has to go to zero. And then in the other case, the integrand was uh, going as one over z squared, I mean, when you don't have exponent i and z, like four integrals on it, then it, as long as f of z is going as one over z squared, one over z cubed, but high bars, yes, you know, it will go to zero in the upper half plane. Uh, so that is the case, and um, if you're going around the pole on the real axis, remember to calculate that that contribution comes. The principal value integration comes. It is not uh, zero, right? It is a uh, value, um, which is sort of minus L5, the value of the function value at the pole, which is lying on the real axis, right? And so, so those are the things. And then, I know, um, if you're square root of x or something somewhere, then try to that x equal to zero is also a branch point, so you have to put the branch cut on the contour. The type of the contour has to be very clearly specified. And uh, so, uh, as in, we have to use the right terminology. Mm -hmm. If if you if we, something requires a branch cut, we only not only need to draw it, we also need to say like branch cut. Yes, I mean just point it as a branch cut, yeah. Okay. yeah. Because that's that's a whole you know I mean steps right. I mean, uh, uh, and because we do calculate the value of the functions are different on up for uh, the, the uh, about the branch cut, and below the branch cut, the values of the functions are different. Uh, so, yeah, so I think that's some, yeah, I, if you understand the basics, I think it should be easier. I mean, it's not, uh, you know, unless some complicated rules up there, I have no idea, but uh, I'm just saying. You know, so show all the steps to get partial credits and all that, I mean, that's important. Uh, you can do it through on there, should make extra credit. <laughs> Which you for extra credit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bargaining, huh? That's a, that's, a good, that's a good middle ground. And <laughs> if we have time to actually at least spend some time working. 